is graffiti art or crime? Well, I'm uh, an urban geographer, so I'm interested in the relationship between people and places, so I might first ask the question, uh, well, it depends on where it is. But you, you might uh, uh, first want to know what it looks like. Because when you go down the street, you might say, I don't really like that mural on the side of that building, but that uh, tag on that street sign, that's, that's rubbish. Uh, someone else might disagree. After all, art is in the eye of the beholder. <coughs> this artwork by the uh, graffiti writer Barry McGee plays on this page. It's an artwork totally made up of tag, but it's done with permission, and it's in downtown, it's in downtown New York. <coughs> Uh, so what? I mean, is it really important that we know whether it's art or crime? I mean, it is an important question. Uh, for the people who own the buildings, for the people who are walking by, for the sense of community, uh, 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 for local governments who are tasked with uh, keeping order in our cities. I mean, uh, uh, informal urban arts in our cities are very important. Uh, they're an emotionally charged and fraught issue about right and wrong, about order and disorder. In New South Wales alone, local and state governments spend approximately $100 million a year managing the presence of graffiti, which means, essentially, spending lots of money removing it, removing it over and over again. So, on the one hand, we've got an increased criminalisation of graffiti writers and graffiti. Uh, 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 there's a protracted war on graffiti goes on uh, based on new laws and, and zero tolerance policies. And on the other hand, we've got governments opening up spaces for new forms of street art as they look to turn to embrace the uh, economic potentials of the creative economy, to take advantage of the so-called fancy effect based on that uh, notoriously successful street art. Uh, uh, we might conclude that this street art is an adequate contribution to our cities. The city of Sydney did. They paid Barry McGee to come out here and do a laneway artwork as a part of the uh, uh, Art and About public art program. And whilst he was here, he, he did another one of his tag artworks on a building down in Circular Quay, uh, this time without permission. <laughs> and the city of Sydney had to remove it. Uh, uh, so it's easy to say that street art's good and graffiti's bad, but uh, it's not so simple. Uh, so what is it? Is it art or is it crime? Uh, should we remove or should we revere? Well, I've been doing work uh, with local governments in Sydney for the last 10 years uh, through a number of funded research projects, helping them to work with this uh, 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 notoriously wicked problem. My research uh, with local governments, with graffiti writers and street artists and with other stakeholders has led to significant social, cultural uh, and uh, economic impact. Uh, firstly, my research has influenced uh, graffiti and street art management policies at the local government level. At the city of Banks, uh, Blacktown uh, in 2012, my research informed their five-year graffiti management plan, which led subsequently to cost savings of about $250,000 a year. It also led to the expansion of uh, youth engagement programs, uh, the graphics program, uh, to uh, the commissioning of laneway artworks to uh, uh, exhibitions on the history of, of, of uh, hip-hop in Western Sydney uh, uh, at the Bankstown Art Centre. In the city of Sydney, my research has informed new policies for graffiti management and for street art, including the Street Art Register, which they use to manage uh, the way they engage with graffiti, um, including uh, 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 resident circuit plates. Uh, our research has led to amendments to the Local Environment Plan so that uh, 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 there are now more spaces opening up for legal graffiti and street art. Now, in more than 60% of the local government area, uh, you can uh, uh, now not do a development application if you want to put graffiti on your own building. <clears throat> My research has also led to uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, profusion of legal graffiti wall programs. Here in uh, Parramatta, we did some research on legal graffiti walls that showed that they were a benefit to local artists who were looking for legal spaces to work but they were also a benefit to local councils because it reduced the cost of illegal graffiti. <coughs> so my research uh, has also led to the preservation of legal graffiti walls in uh, um, places across Sydney, such as the North Beach, in Liverpool Council, uh, in the Inner West as well, where the Perfect Match program, uh, which has been very successful, has led to more than 50 large-scale artworks on buildings uh, since 2014. Uh, so this research on legal graffiti 
uh, has led to uh, significant um, uh, uh, opportunities for urban managers to improve and engage with graffiti and street art. Uh, it's uh, uh, policy changes has re resulted in the uh, capacity of urban managers to respond, uh, uh, help to reduce the social and economic cost to the community, provide clarity for graffiti rights and street artists, and change attitudes to the most important stakeholders in our city, you. Thank you very much, Thank you to our judges uh, for some questions. Um, uh, the state government's position is a zero tolerance position because they don't pay for it. Okay, so local governments pay for it, and so uh, we've been working with local governments who are interested in looking at um, breaking out of that cycle of spending more and more money um, on removing graffiti and removing graffiti and removing graffiti. So we've found that um, some fall into line with the state government's zero tolerance uh, uh, regime, but some are more innovative and looking for ways uh, uh, to move ahead, uh, to engage, to reduce their costs. Uh, uh, but also to not cut off their nose to spite their face, to not remove something that's actually contributing to their community. Um, well, I'd like to actually use it or if it's common, but I have another question, um, which is where to you from here? Do you see this expanding to, to other jurisdictions? Is it a similar challenge around the world and, and extending, or do you see it having application to other sorts of problems or issues? Um, one, one of the... Uh, things that I struggled with in the uh, uh, impact engagement process was uh, I thought this is just a small impact. You know, it's not endometriosis and the potentials that are there. Um, so I saw it as a, and I was convinced uh, that it was a model of deep local impact, and so that was good. Um, and so I think this is something that can be replicated elsewhere. Uh, as a single researcher, I haven't had the energy to do that yet, so I've been building the engagement very much at a local level. Uh, and some of the work that I've done has been picked up. Uh, in Europe, and so I've been working with European partners in the UK and also uh, beyond that. Uh, and so my hope is that, that this type of action and work can be used elsewhere. But in terms of the underlying theory, it is about these wicked problems. And so these can be this type of working through a, a, a policy that's dynamic and understand wicked problems is something that's act actually transferable to a whole lot of different places, a lot of different contexts. Thank you.